Welcome to Showstopper, powered by Equi Ratings. All right, we've been talking about the ELO rating system from Equi Ratings a lot over the past few months, but we thought we'd give you a little refresh to familiarize you guys with the lingo and dive deeper into why it matters. We touched on the ELO rating in episode one, so make sure to go check it out. But let's reiterate what we're actually trying to measure. Think of it like batting average in baseball. We're trying to compare performance. Basically, how many times you compete against how many times you do it successfully and who you beat or lose to. When comparing horses to each other, in other words, measuring who is the better horse, what might you look at? Entrance rate, how often does a horse compete? Clear round rate, how often do they accomplish the goal of zero faults? Win rate, how often they actually prevail? Or which horses beat other horses consistently, so not necessarily winning the class, but beating out competitors week after week, finishing higher in the placings, basically. And very simply, try to remember this. An ELO of over 775 is great. That's a top level horse in our sport and accounts for only 1% of all CSI five star level meter 60 rounds over the last 10 years or so. It also means that the horse is jumping over 58% of the time clear. An ELO of 650 to 674 is a nice average rate accounting for 14% of total rounds and a 27% clear rate. If the horse is in this range, it's right in the middle of the pack. And if it's between 675 and 774, it's above average. If the horse has an ELO below 500, its clear rate is only 7%. But luckily, only 3% of horses jumping five star meter 60 level have a rating this low. So try to remember this. Below 500 to around 650 is below average. 650 to 774 is solid and above 775 is exceptional. The algorithm of the ELO is proprietary to equi ratings, but takes into account many factors that could influence the rating. The ELO changes differently depending on the level of competition. For example, a horse will get more ELO points for a win in CSI five-star meter 60 class than for a win in a CSI four-star meter 50 class. That makes sense. The ELO will also change differently depending on the horse's career position. For the first 12 rounds of a horse's career at CSI four and five star meter 50 plus level, we will see bigger changes up and down in their ELO than later in their career. For example, a nine-year-old horse jumping its first four star meter 50 will get more ELO points for a win in that class than a 16-year-old horse on the same ELO, but that has been jumping that level for years. In every competition, except team competitions, the ELO growth or loss is based on their finishing position in a particular class, so who they beat and were beaten by. The quality of who they beat and who they're beaten by will determine how big the boost or loss will be. Think of it like to beat or be defeated. So in every class a horse jumps, it's like, who did they finish ahead of or who were they worse than? It's a trading system where they gain and lose points from their fellow competitors depending on where they finish. For example, King Edward has an ELO of 819, so he is more likely than not to beat a horse on an ELO of 725. If the 725 ELO horse were to beat King Edward in the same competition, the 725 horse would have a bigger ELO boost in points than if King Edward were to beat the 725. So with that idea in mind, think of the ELO as having predictive power. It obviously isn't perfect because that's sport, but establishing the ELO helps us to determine who is more likely to win than someone else and can be a very valuable metric in helping to decide selection for Nations Cups, championships, and of course the upcoming Olympic Games. It's Moneyball, people, and sport or sport is starting to play by the numbers.